Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make Bowser's Castle. From the game and franchise and movie and the list goes on, Super Mario. This is the amount of space required to make the build. And here are all of the materials that we will be using. Begin by placing 8 stone bricks extending up from the ground. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We then want to place a stone brick wall on top. And then extend that to the right using 3 stone bricks. 1, 2, 3. Then place a stone brick wall on the end. Extend backwards by 3 bricks. 1, 2, 3. Place a stone brick wall on the end and then extend across by 3 using stone bricks, 1, 2, 3. Place a stone brick wall on the end, and then join all the way back to the beginning. And this is kind of how we are going to make each one of the towers. We now want to extend the middle of the right side of the tower, which is this block here, to the right by 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then we are going to place light grey concrete in front of this 8th block. We want to place 3. 1, 2, 3. Then extend this block up by 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then extend right 1, up 1, right by 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then down, right, and then extend down until we are at the same height as the opposite side. We then want to extend backwards by two, one, two, place a stone brick behind, and then extend the brick to the right by eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then we want to place a stone brick in front of this 8th block, with a stone brick wall in front of that. Extend to the right by 3 using stone bricks, 1, 2, 3. Place a stone brick wall on the end, and then extend backwards by 3 using bricks, 1, 2, 3. Place a stone brick wall on the end, and then extend across the back by 3, 1, 2, 3, using stone bricks. Place a stone brick wall on the end and then join back. And the end result of this should look like this. Now we want to extend backwards and we want to come to the middle of the right tower here. So we take this middle stone brick block and extend backwards by 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. We then extend the 16th block left and right, place stone brick wall on the ends, and then extend rows of three stone bricks from each one of the wall. One, two, three, one, two, three, place a wall on the end, and then of course join them together once more. And not only do we want to do this with that side of the castle, but we want to come all the way over to the opposite side, find the central block in this first tower that we made, and extend it back by 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. To which we will then extend right and left, place a stone brick wall on the end of course, then extend backwards, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, wall on the end, and then stone bricks in between. And last but not least, we simply want to connect the centre of the two inside part of the towers together with a row of stone bricks extending from left to right, and the end result should look like this, so relatively simple. Come all the way back to the first tower that we made. There's actually no reason to come to this one specifically, but it seems symbolic as we started here. Well, on top of this tower, and I do mean the entire thing, the wall and the bricks, we want to add 10 additional rows of each on top of the base of the tower. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we just want to do the exact same with each one of the other blocks.
Once you've done that, we now want to add a layer of black concrete in a square shape all the way around the top of the tower. Then place birch buttons on the outside of the black concrete. Then we want to place upside down stone brick stairs on top of the layer of black concrete. This can be a little bit tricky. Then, last but not least, we want to place stone bricks on the four corners of the tower and the central blocks of the tower also. Then it's kind of up to you how you want to fill the top of the tower in. I think I'm just going to join all this black concrete together. The end result of all of our hard work is this. And of course, once we've done that once, we have to do it three more times. And once again, just to remind you, it is a layer of 10 wall and bricks on top of the base.
With each one of the four corner towers made, we can work on the walls. Starting with once again the front left hand corner tower, we want to come all the way up to the top, just below the line of black concrete with the birch buttons in front of it, we find the centre stone brick and we connect this all the way over to the opposite tower, just like this. And then we do the exact same thing with the front right corner tower and the back right corner tower. And then the same thing with the back right corner tower and the back left corner tower. And lastly, we connect the back left corner tower to the front left corner tower. Now, this forms four very distinct rectangular shapes which now need filling in using stone bricks. Now that we have filled in each one of the four main walls, we can work on the roof. So for the roof, I actually didn't include this material in the item list, but you can easily use light grey concrete or grey concrete as a substitute. I'm feeling cyan terracotta. So to fill in the roof, we literally just at the top of the walls, underneath the black concrete tower line, we fill in the entire top of the castle.
With the roof filled in, we can now work on the entrance. At the top of the entrance, which is essentially a big giant wooden gate, we have a stone bowser head. So locate the top of this archway here and place a polished andensite in front of the middle, and then extend it one row outwards. Add andensite left and right of this with upside down polished andensite stairs on the left and right of that. Then add a layer of polished andensite on top of all of the blocks that we've just placed, with then sideways faced polished andensite stairs on the left and right, and then in the middle a polished andensite, left and right of that a grey concrete, behind this polished andensite, then behind all all of the exposed andensite blocks that we can see, we want to extend these back and join them to the castle wall. So this is essentially just the top row and just a little bit on the left here. So just like this, the gate will cover up the rest. And this is essentially Bowser's snout. What we then want to do is take this back row just behind the stairs part and we want to place one, two, three polished andensite blocks, one, two, three polished andensite blocks on top of each other. Inwards from this, a row of two light grey concrete extending up. Then in between this, polished andensite and then join it together across the top. Then a grey concrete in between the upper light grey concretes with then extending upwards and outwards diagonally another grey concrete block and then extend those outwards another row. Then we want to extend the polished andensite backwards like this so it will join to the castle wall and we want to sit it on top of the wall as well just like this and then we'll just join it together at the top and fill it in and that is looking pretty good. And next, we want to add a little bit more shape to the top of Bowser's head. So we're just going to find these six central blocks here and just add another row on top. We also want to add some kind of like... It, it's kind of like spiky here. It's meant to be a little bit random looking, but it's hard to achieve the effect. So on the back two corners of what we've just extended up, we'll place and inside there, upside down and inside on top. And then, if you like, well, honestly, you can kind of just leave it like that if you like. It looks perfectly fine. Or maybe, could we add another one and that... Yeah, I guess we can see it a little bit better. We'll add another one on top. On the side of Bowser's head, we have horns. So this is... Basically, it just lines up with this, like the first and then side block that we just like extended upwards. We'll have a light grey concrete here on the side. Extend up one. Stick a stone brick wall on top. So, once again... Light grey concrete, stick one on top, stone brick wall on top of that. And that is looking really, really good. So that is a stone bowser head. Next, we want to connect the gate to the actual wall. So to do this, of course, we just want to place our light grey concrete just like this. Just join it together. Just We just want to make sure it doesn't look weird from the inside. So we just need to make sure it looks good from all angles just like that then we are going to add a layer of spruce planks at the back of this so spruce planks are going to be kind of like the door material now this castle doesn't have an entrance it's big enough to actually be a functional castle so do feel free to stick a little tiny door in the middle i guess if you'd like to but with that complete we can now head all the way up on top of the actual roof because there is something up here and this is why we made the bowser head first because we want to find the center of the bowser head it's quite easy it's in between these two strands of spikes we want to leave a gap of three from the middle block so one two three leave a gap of that amount and then on this fourth block place a white concrete on the fourth space. So once again, you're just leaving a gap of three and on this fourth block, we have the white concrete. Then extend the white concrete left and right by four. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. Then we extend both sides backwards diagonally by two, one, two, and then extend back by six. So one, two, three, four, 
five, six. And on the opposite side, extend diagonally back one, two, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. Extend diagonally towards the back, inwards by two, and then just join both sides together. So we went through that rather quickly, but this is the end result. So once we have this outer shape, we can now add some lime concrete above and inside of the shape that we've made. So this is going to connect together at the corners like this. And essentially what we're making, I'm not sure whether I've actually said it or not already, is we are making a Bowser shell on top of this. So, or a Cooper shell, but I guess Bowser is technically a Cooper, right? I need to check out my Mario lore. But anyway, regardless of that, so once we've added our first layer of lime concrete, we are going to do the exact same thing using the exact same strategy. So we're going to add another layer of lime above and inside the previous shape of lime like this, joining together at the corners. Then we are going to extend this one row upwards like this. So this middle part is going to peak a little bit. Then we are going to add one final layer of lime concrete that is going to sit above and cover the empty space that we have at the top of the shell. So the end result of this will be a rather simple looking perfect. This is a good starting point. With this complete, on the front we want to locate the first layer of lime concrete and we want to place an additional lime concrete on top of it. Extend this left two and right two. Then extend the three middle blocks each up by one. So you can see that we've got a bit more of a curved shape. We want the exact same thing on the back. So we essentially take the middle block here, extend right two, left two, and then the three middle blocks up. And then on the left and right side, we just want to extend up the three middle blocks. So we've just made the shape a little bit more complicated. It looks way better like this. Then on the front of the build, we have to add some spikes and well, kind of like on all of the sides actually, but the way to do it is this. We take the center white concrete and we add a yellow concrete on top, move up and we add a yellow concrete here as well. We also add a yellow concrete here and then we want to leave a gap of one, add another one, move down onto the back of the shell, add one here and here. So it's, it's kind of difficult to explain, it's easier to see, but essentially we're kind of just like leaving a gap of one between the yellow concretes as we move up towards the center and over to the back of the shell. And we kind of want to do a similar thing on the left and right side as well, so we'll add one on the center of the right side here, leave a gap of one, add an extra yellow here, or maybe even here might be better, so maybe like here and here, that might be good. And then on this opposite side here, so on the white, and then on the next layer, and then we'll leave a gap, and then there we go. I think that that's probably a better looking way of doing it. With the gate section and the roof complete, we can now work on the smaller surrounding wall. Come all the way over to the right side of the gate. We want to locate the fourth stone brick starting from the bottom, so working our way up. One, two, three, four. Place a cyan terracotta in front of the brick. Extend that brick all the way around, and the idea here is that this wants to surround the entire castle, so we will have one layer of cyan terracotta that travels all the way around the edge of the castle and will allow us to walk on the top of the lower walls. Perfect, just like this. So what we now want to do is add stone bricks in front of the cyan terracotta. And once we have added the layer of stone bricks, we want to connect them down to equal the height of the lower part of the castle.
With the bulk of the lower wall made, I want to show you something that is a little bit of a personal preference thing, so it's up to you whether you do this. You can decide to round out the corners of the lower wall by destroying the central row of stone bricks wherever we have a hard corner, and then adding an additional brick just up here in the top. So wherever you find this, so more so on the outer corners and um, we have a couple on the inward corners, you may choose to just destroy the center row just like this, just on the corner, and it kind of gives a more rounded effect. You might like this better than the square or you might like the square better than the round. It's kind of up to you. My personal preference is the round. Next, make your way to the bottom left front side of your castle. That's a mouthful. At the bottom of this wall, we want to find the three middle blocks and place two rows of stone bricks extending outwards from those three middle blocks. We then want to add a layer of light gray concrete on top of the outer row and two black concrete on top of the center row light grey concrete all the way around the two black concrete and then place a layer of stone bricks behind this extending up on top of this wall across forwards and down like this add a layer of stone bricks all the way around on top of this to form a square with lime concrete on top of these stone bricks we then want to extend the sides of that square of lime concrete outwards just like this, extend the original square of lime concrete upwards a row, and then add one in the middle at the top for good measure. Let's do the same on the opposite side. So if we come to the front right side of the castle, locate the three middle blocks, we extend them outwards two rows, add a layer of light grey concrete on top of the outer row, two black concrete on top of the centre, light grey concrete all the way around it, fill in the gap behind the light grey concrete using stone bricks, preferably not losing your ability to fly in the process, then stone bricks all the way around the top of this, layer of lime concrete on top, we then extend that all the way around like this, add another layer on top of the original layer and then one in the middle extending up. And there we go, that looks really good. Next, we want to work our way to the right side of the castle. We want to locate the middle block on this wall. It should have five blocks to the left of it and five blocks to the right of it. Extend the stone brick all the way up until it reaches the height of the wall that surrounds it. And then extend the stone brick left and right like this. Then extend the left and right rows forwards until they overhang the side of the castle wall by two rows. We're essentially making a three by three square. So we will also want to connect these together just at the end like this as well. Then we're going to place a layer of black concrete all the way around on top of this and we'll need the birch buttons because we are going to place these along the black concrete as well. And then, last but not least, we want to add a layer of upside down stone brick stairs all the way around the top of this. This is very reminiscent of what we did earlier. Then add a layer of lime concrete on top. Extend that out on each one of the four sides. Then add a layer on top of the original layer of lime and then peak the top like this. And there we go. This is the tower that we want to have on the right side of the build, and we will also want to have the same thing on the opposite side as well.
Now, with both of those complete, we now want to come towards the back of the castle, and we want to make a very similar tower, but it's ever so slightly different. So come over to the left side or the right side, it actually doesn't matter, we've got to do it on both anyway, and we want to come to the end of the long stretch of stone bricks. Leave a gap of one, and then place one, two, three stone bricks atop this wall. These stone bricks want to extend up, and they want to be as high as the top of the actual castle towers on each one of the four corners. So once we reach this height, we then want to form them into a 3x3 three three square at the top, and then we want to add the same roof shape that we have used a few times already. So these towers are otherwise plain, but they want to be made in kind of like a hybrid way to the other towers, and they are ever so slightly taller than pretty much everything else. And we also want to extend the sides of the tower down as well, and do remember that we want the exact same thing just over there too. The end result should look like this. Next, come all the way to the front of your castle and come towards the left side. Grab your stone bricks, and what we essentially want to do is this. Leave a gap of one from the gate here, and atop the lower wall, place one, two, three stone bricks extending to the left. Then, coinciding with these three blocks, in the upper wall, we want to leave a gap of two at the bottom, so one, two, and then destroy the same three rows that we have just in front. These then want to get destroyed one, two, three rows, extending upwards like this. We place stone brick stairs in the top two corners, and then this, I realize this is an odd choice, but I think this really works nicely. We want to place shroom light behind this empty space, with then birch fence in front of the shroom light, extending up from the middle vertically, we then take the second fence starting from the bottom and then expand it left and right. Then above the window, we want to add stone bricks extending up like this, and that is going to be a window design that we use many times. Right now, we want to do the exact same thing on the right side of the build, and I've just noticed this light grey concrete here wants to get extended backwards, but you guys know what to do. Leave a gap of one from the gate, one, two, three, and it all starts from there. Perfect. Now, however, we want to work our way onto the right side of the build, and we want to have that exact same window design on the right side. And the way that we are going to do this is stemming from the left and right side of this tower, we'll place one, two, three stone bricks, and then I think that you guys can figure out the rest. The three stone bricks that coincide behind it, we leave a gap of two, and then we want to have a row of four, with then the upside down stairs at the top, the shroom light behind, the cross of birch fence in the middle, and then the castle wall wants to be peaked on top. And we will do this, both sides of this central tower, and on the opposite side of the build also.
And now that we've done this on both sides, we can also do it on the back of the build as well. So we can either do it directly behind these towers, which is a little bit redundant because we can't see them, or we could perhaps place them just inwards from each one of the towers just like this, and of course just follow the same design logic after that. With those final two windows complete, we also want to raise up some of the parts of the outer wall as well. These parts are going to coincide with the tower, so we'll take the center part of the tower, and whichever part of the wall coincides with that, we will also extend up. So this pretty much means that we have to do it just a few times on each side, because we've already done this a bunch with the windows anyway and yeah there we go that is absolutely perfect with all of these details on the actual castle complete we can now add the courtyard once again come all the way over to the front left hand corner of your castle we want to extend this stone brick right here down one row like this this coincides with the black concrete above Extend the stone brick forwards by 8 rows. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We then want to extend it inwards to the right by 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We then want to extend it forwards by 3. 1, 2, 3. We then want to place 7 stone brick stairs extending to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Place a stone brick on the end, extend back by 3, 1, 2, 3, then extend over to the right by 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then we want to extend all the way back and we should just connect to the equivalent part on the opposite side of the castle. So what we now want to do is we want to turn these two corner blocks here into braziers. So we take the corner and we extend it to the right or outwards, one, and then forwards, two, one, two, and then left, two, one, two, and then back on itself. And then we want to add another layer of bricks onto the circular part that we've just made, black concrete on top of the bricks, birch buttons surrounding the black concrete. Then we want to place a campfire just underneath the top like this so we can see the flame and the smoke but not the actual wood of it and we want to do this on both sides so come all the way over to this side here and we want to take the stone brick here extend it left one forwards two right two in add a layer on top black concrete on top of that birch buttons all the way around the outside to make the wristband then we want to add a layer of nothing on top of it. We want to add a black concrete in the middle with a campfire inside. And the reason that I called it a wristband, by the way, is because it's obviously based upon like the shackles that Bowser has like around his wrists. Or at least I think so. I wonder which came first, Bowser's castle or Bowser's wristbands. Who knows? That's the fun. So next, we want to add a layer of stone brick wall on top of the rows of stone bricks that we've placed. The only place that we don't want to do this is on the very ends where they connect to the stone brick stairs. We want to use polished black stone wall instead just on the very end and then connect everything together using stone brick wall on this side also. And once that has been done, we now want to fill the middle of this in. So to do this, a bit of a strange combination, just underneath the doorway, we want to have 
a checkered pattern of white and black concrete. I don't know why this is here. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I don't know why we have, you know, a miniature chessboard in front of the gate, but you know, it is what it is. And then we want to have the entire rest of the courtyard paved in actual stone. So we don't actually have to fill underneath the castle in, unless of course you do want to actually use the castle as a castle, which I mean, you know, it's a solid choice, especially for a survival build. This is relatively survival friendly, I think, you know, given the materials. So survival friendly-ish. Well, anyway, fill the entire courtyard in using stone. There we go. Perfect. Next, we want to extend Bowser's castle down to the ground. I do also want to point out that this actually looks really awesome as like a floating castle, especially if you have a bed of lava below it, but it's your choice whether you want to connect it to the ground or not. I'll leave that up to you. If you do want to connect it down to the ground, we ignore the braziers, but we do utilize the stone brick outline that runs through them. We also ignore the platform on the front center part of the build and we just run straight across it. But other than that, we want to join the outer part of the walls down to the ground. So we literally, we just go all the way around and we connect the outer part of stone bricks all the way down to the ground. So it doesn't really matter what manner you do this, whether you do it in sides or whether you go all the way around and do loops and loops and loops. All that really matters is that this eventually does get stuck down to the ground or not, because again, you do have the option to have this flow. It does look very cool that way.
well, that certainly took a while. The only thing that I would recommend after this is adding a lava moat, because I really do feel as though it just completes the effect, which is a lot easier to do with World Edit. Now, it's completely up to you how much lava you do want to add. I probably wouldn't add an insane amount, just enough that you get a cool effect. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the entire castle made. I do hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial. Please do remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.